It's time. It's time! We're getting straight in there. Germany, home nation, I'm gonna piss that group to be honest. And realistically, I think this is quite a close group. And I'm genuinely not gonna be biased today for once. I'm gonna say what I actually think. So I'm not gonna send Scotland out just because of Scotland. If I do send Scotland out, it'll be because of crap. Scotland, I won a game in the last seven. And two of them are against Norway and Georgia. If you can't beat Norway or Georgia, what chance have you got against Hungary and Switzerland, who are much better than them, or Germany? You're numb! But I've also got like a bit of a pet peeve when people talk about form with international teams. Form is relative if you're playing quite fast. Like if you're in league football, domestic football, and you're playing like a Tuesday, Saturday, then momentum applies, doesn't it? You cannot take form with international football when you last played in February. There's no form with a four-month gap to February to June, is there? So although Hungary and Switzerland have both had better form going into this, I do, honest to God, fancy Scotland in second. And then people always write Switzerland off. People always say they'll finish third or fourth, and in reality they finish second a lot of the time. But I think Hungary will get third hole and Switzerland will be fourth. So I'm back in Scotland to go through. Spain, I do worry for Spain a little bit because they've still not got a serious striker. They are still running around with Morata up front in 2024. They just, they've not been blessed in striker departments since like David Vier and Torres. And it's a tough group. Croatia, obviously, no mugs. Italy won it last time out. But I do think Spain will win it. And then Croatia, you can never, you can never go against Croatia really in tournament football. So I'll go Spain first, Croatia, Italy, and then Albania to finish last in that group. Group C is an obvious nine points for England. And then a lot of time you're just going off instinct, especially with international football. And my instinct tells me that Denmark are going to finish second. Now, Serbia and Slovenia are no mugs, but I still think Denmark will finish second, and then I would have Slovenia third. For Group D, oh, that's another tough group that... Apart from France, let's just get France out of the way, because France are obviously going to win that group. But apart from France, Netherlands... Big nation, won a lot of things in the past. But recently they've been tossed. They've not been anything like for years, Netherlands. However, Austria and Poland, they, sh they should have more than Austria and Poland, especially like defensively. Van Dijk's been at his best this season. So you'd think he can maybe drag them over. Like, I don't think they concede a lot of goals. So maybe Netherlands second. And then, again, this is tough for third place, but I would probably edge Austria over Poland. Group E, it's last dance for a lot of Belgium's big lads. I mean, Azad's already retired. Lukaku's not as good as he was. De Bruyne starts getting a sacker and he starts limping off in big games when he can't hack it. So it is the last dance for a lot of these boys. But that's a, a relatively poor group. It's a competitive group and one where the third place team might go through because of how competitive them three are. But you'd expect Belgium to win that. And then I would probably say Ukraine, Romania, third, Slovakia, fourth. Now for Group F, Portugal are a little bit dodgy as well. I'm not like overly keen on Portugal, but that is a crap group. So Portugal win that. And again, with this group and these teams, instincts and some very famous quotes from people in the past for European competitions with Turkey about them potentially being dark horses. They are not. Czech Republic second, Turkey third, Georgia fourth. And then for the third place ranking, the four best teams go through. So it's not about who the best team is here. It's about realistically who's got the most competitive group. Who's going to get the most points in fourth, in third even. And Hungary, you'd expect to get a lot of points in that one. Probably Italy. Don't fancy Slovenia that much. Austria, yeah. Probably Romania, yeah, as well. But ranking them, Hungary, Italy, Austria, Romania, Turkey, Slovenia. Germany versus Denmark, first round of 16 game. You can imagine that Germany are going to be very strong this tournament. We have been home nation against a lesser nation as well in Denmark, then you can see Germany going through in that. Scotland-Croatia, I mean, if that is the tie, and it's Modric and Kovacic versus McTominay and John McGinn. Let's just be serious for a minute, come on. Meatball man at match, Scotland through. That means Scotland going quarters. <laughs> Not a star on the shirt for that. Spain, I think, would be too strong for Austria. England-Romania, aren't they done us last two times we've played them in tournaments? In 98 and 2000, I'm sure they've done us twice. But not today. Not these days. Come on, that was, that was banter England of the past. This is serious England. We're winning that. Portugal and Italy, two big names, two big nations, two big countries that I don't actually think are all that, to be honest. I'm not overly impressed by any of these, but Portugal, Ronaldo, you know what I mean? Even though he's an old boy these days, big games call for big players, don't they? Like him, Bruno, Bernardo Silva, them type of boys, you'd, you'd think a drag them through against someone like Italy. Netherlands will beat Ukraine. Belgium, I, I mean, to be honest, you'd expect Belgium to beat Hungary as well, just for De Bruyne tax, and that's literally it. And then France, obvious winners against Czech Republic. <laughs> God, I hope this is how it goes down. 
These are games that you want out there. Germany versus Spain, Portugal versus Netherlands, Belgium versus France, and England, Scotland in quarters. Germany, Spain, first one. <sighs> this is the first time in a long time that I'm looking at a Germany squad with a bit of fear. Like some of the youngers that they've got coming through, Mussi Alavertz, obviously you've got your older boys that have been there and done it for ages that can guide them through, like a Thomas Muller, a Cruz, a Kimmich, someone like that. The squad's very strong where it hasn't been in previous tournaments. Again, being home nation, Germany. German fans are nutcases. Atmosphere will be nuts. Spain don't really travel that well. It'll be like a 90-10 split in favour of Germany for fans in ground. I would back Germany to beat Spain in that game. Portugal, Holland. Again, this is the same thing as Portugal, Italy. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of the Netherlands either these days, like, team-wise. I don't think they're that good. But for the same logic that I use for Portugal beating Italy, where they've got big players that have been there and done it, they've won everything there is to win. They've got five-time Ballon d'Or, however, however many he's got, Ronaldo. I would have Portugal to beat Netherlands in that game to go through the semis. Belgium, France. <sighs> Sorry, boys. It's, it's France all day, isn't it? And then England versus Scotland in a quarter-final. Come on. Like, come on. 4-0 England. I'll still be at honours ball though, that for Scots, don't worry. And if they're semi-finals, I will be very impressed. Germany, Portugal and France, England. And I'm going to keep my integrity intact here. I'm not going to go down a certain path just because I'm English and I don't like Germany. And I obviously like England. I'm going to go down what I actually think it'll be, which is that Germany beat Portugal. And in France, England, the rematch after two years ago, France obviously a lot stronger defensively. Like Saliba don't even get it team. And he'd probably be our second best centre back behind John. They've got Mbappe. Do you know what I mean? But our midfield is the best in world football. Rice, Bellingham, Foden, Palmer, Saka, like, Payne, John. It'll obviously be a really good game. I could see Walker locking Mbappe down. He is that guy. He is that guy, Walker. And it'll be a really good game, but I would back England to win. Serious. Like, being serious, I think England will beat France this time. Meaning, we get one of the biggest international rivalries there is in final or Euros. There'll be hundreds of thousands of English lads there. Atmosphere will be nuts. It would be very England to beat the obvious favourites in France and then lose in final. That would be seriously England all over. Germany obviously being at home, like I've said, for basically every round. Penalties. England. I feel like we do just constantly improve under Southgate, even though the football's dull and some of his decisions sometimes make you question your life choices. But every tournament since 2018, we've just got better. Maybe not in terms of your progression where you're finishing. Like, we went to semi-finals against Croatia, then to final against Italy, then to quarters against France. But I feel like performance-wise, we've been better every tournament. As squad's the strongest that it's been in decades. We've got players that have played with each other tournament after tournament, game after game, for the past six, eight years. And even though individually, as defence is definitely not the most talented there, Sean Maguire Stones Walker has been the back four for what feels like donkeys. It, it feels like it's been that forever. And I'm going for, in my head, strength in settled players that have played with each other for a long time over anything else like i always think most successful teams ever are built on a back four or a back five that's constantly played with each other like neville rio vidic ever marcelo ramos pepe carvajal do you know what i mean like a back four that's set in stone that play with each other constantly that don't concede a lot of goals well, i think at last year rose and italy's defense in that the two center backs chiellini and Benucci, have got a combined age of about 90 and they won. They won the tournament through a lot of experience, a lot of know-how. And I think that the playing with each other for years on end, time after time, it'll finally come good for England this tournament. I really do. I, I feel like this... This is the one! God, I really, really hope I'm right. I, I have enough pain at club football. I don't need it international as well. We, we, we've got to win something. If we don't win it this time, will we ever? Really? But it's coming home. Thank you for watching. Come on, guys!